day of the Spiritual Wisdom Hour on the Spiritual Events Directory. I hope you're all really well and uh, enjoying the day. Happy birthday to my beautiful sister, Sally Target. And uh, she is in lockdown in Melbourne but planning to read a book and uh, enjoy the day. So happy birthday to her. I uh, hope you're all really well. And uh, please let me know uh, where you are and what you're doing and how you are. Um, I'm just going to bring up another page just in case I'm not getting the um, comments because that can be a bit fickle sometimes. So today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the changing uh, frequencies that are happening. A lot of people have said to me that they're having really weird dreams and I am one of them, I tell you that. And uh, so I did do a little bit of a channeling about that, put it up on my Tours Angels page and then I put it up on my channelings blog which is victoriacochran44.com this morning. Um, and a few people said, oh, we're having such terrible dreams. Or, and so I just wondered if, you, if you're if you the same. Uh, let me see if I can find... I'm not getting any comments, so I'm just going to look on the next page. There I am. Um, there we go. No comments yet, so that's all right. Um, yeah, so let me know if you're having bad dreams and, uh, or if funny things are happening. Hi Kerry, lovely to see you. And I'm just going on to, I do have a business page, so um, my website is victoriacochran.com, but my business page is Victoria Cochran Psychic Communication and Spiritual Healing, and I cross post to there, so I'm just making sure that I'm um, online there as well. Uh, hi Charlotte, great to see you. Uh, I hope the weather's better up there than it is down here. It's not too much fun. Uh, it's pretty rainy and squally and here. And um, hi Hannah, hi, great to see you. Uh, and Fiona, weird dreams, yes. And Kat Gray, hi from Queensland. Gee, a few from Queensland there. I'm in Tassie. Hi, Tanya. Um, you've not been remembering your dreams. The weather here is wet. Quite windy here in southwest Victoria. Hope to get out in the garden later. Whereabouts are you, Tanya? I've got my phone down here. I'm cross-posting to my other page. Um, yeah, so I might read you that channeling that I did. Um, and... It more or less just says that there's a lot of cleansing going on and a lot of shifting and I think the COVID thing is part of that as well and uh, then I just want to talk quickly about um, the new healing modalities that people are bringing through um, and I'm working with a couple of people and have worked with people who are bringing through new modalities and then I started been through a different way of doing Reiki yesterday which was really exciting and Archangel Michael talked about that in his book with Ron Herman in 2003 so that's quite a long time ago and uh, it's still happening and Ascension you know I wrote about Ascension in 2013 and 2015 and it's just like it just hasn't been happening because we all have free will and people are making decisions that are not always for the greater good. They're just for their own highest and best and uh, it's just slowed things down. Doesn't mean it's not happening mm -hmm. though. It definitely is. Um, so someone's just... Sorry, I can't go back. It definitely is, um, but it's just a bit slower and I think now the, the bad dreams or the funny dreams are part of that. Um, so, oh, 
Oh, tan is in Portland. Lovely. It's nice down there. That's near Warrnambool, I think, isn't it? Down that way. Port down that way. Anyway, um, very nice. Okay, so here's the explanation that I wrote up. Oh, there's some more comments here that I haven't been getting um, on the other one. I'm swapping pages. Oh, there they are. Um, Kat says she's been having lots of dreams. Charlotte says hot and humid. Lisa, I'm finally able to join you live. Oh, I'm sorry you haven't been able to do that, Lisa. Uh, Fiona says down in Melbourne, prison. <laughs> Hopefully it's going to lighten up soon. Um, last night I was in a house that was being moved on the back of a truck. The back wall was missing and it was my job to stop things falling out. Oh, she's talking about dreams and thinking, she's thinking of her going down in, on a truck in the middle of the road. Um, okay, lots of moving, lots of shifting. Back wall was missing. It was my job to stop things from falling out. Yeah, wow. Um, not doing readings just at the moment. I will later, but I, I usually um, go for about half an hour and just talk about things that are pertinent to people's spiritual development and that kind of thing, and then I'll do readings. Um, Kerry says, I keep getting the same dream every now and then. It's about a house, normally in the basement. It's always the same house, lots of bedrooms, dark and always near water. Either water on the other side or very close to the water. Is there a reason? Yes. There is, well, a house is you, so our personality and our, we are the house. Okay, so if the back's falling out of a house, then what is it that we're not letting go of? So for Fiona, I would say maybe there's some things that you, you need to let go of, but you're trying not to or you don't want to. Um, so the rooms, the more rooms there are in the house, the more... It depends on how cluttered they are, it depends on, um, you know, how big they are and that kind of thing. Um, I often have a dream of a really big house, but only living in two rooms. And then there's an upstairs and it goes all over the place. And I just think, as a mother and wife, I think about the cleaning. But it, to me, that's like there's so much potential that I have in my spiritual work and my spiritual growth and you know to get out of my comfort zone and to actually explore other parts of my knowledge my spiritual knowledge which is in other parts of the house and hello Catherine lovely to see you yeah and so if you're dreaming about being attacked um, then you know and co quite often my dreams are about that too but I'm always calling in the light in my dreams and always thinking of a way to actually be of a higher vibration than the attacker in my dreams and that's really good that I'm, a, I'm a, even able to do that in my dreams and I've worked hard on doing that in the last few years. So I have a big dream book and if you don't mind me dashing off for a minute I can just grab it and um, tell you it has a whole thing about houses and things. <coughs> And this is what I love about this session is that uh, people bring up things that are um, happening with them and we can talk about them a bit more. So in this book, this is actually by Pamela Jane Ball and I've had this for a long time and uh, it's actually fantastic um, and I go to it quite often. But in here, a house is in a building Buildings in dreams represent the constructions we make in our lives. They are attitudes and beliefs we have built from our experience, perception and often from our family habits and customs. Where in real life we can learn a lot about a person from his personal environment. So in dreams, a building can also reflect the dreamer's character, hopes and concerns. The features of the building mirror the features of the dreamer's personality. Yeah, so I was right there. Um, hi Tam, great, thank you. Um, I'll get to readings later. Um, so then it goes on to say, uh, 
Buildings in dreams can become composite and therefore confusing. In understanding the dream, we should interpret the main appearance of the building first as its main function and the secondary appearance as qualities to be recognised. So it talks about the building and then components of the building, like balconies and things. But house, if we are aware, aware that the house is not empty, that there is something in it, like furnishings, it shows a particular aspect of the dreamer. Um, an impressive or inspiring house in a dream such as this, we are conscious of the self or the soul. Moving to a larger house, there's need for a change in our lives. So, you know, it really talks about uh, the different parts of our lives. If the house is really small, we might be feeling constricted. If it's full of comfy couches, we're in our comfort zone and we need to kind of branch out. Those kinds of things. Um, then water is emotion. So if the water is really still and deep, it means there's a lot of emotion that still needs to be released. If it's really turbulent, then you're going through a whole lot of stuff that um, you're still working through. So uh, when you know kind of those kinds of things, then it's easier to interpret your dreams. My recurring dream, Fiona says, for about six years is wondering where the dogs are. It's not usually my dogs or my house though. I fear they are being locked outside. Is it past life stuff? It usually involves under stairs. Oh, so then, <laughs> here I go, I'll be dream interpreter for the day. Um, so if we go back to stairs, which is part of the um, building. Now I've got to find it again. Stairs are often an indication of the steps we must take in order to achieve a, a goal. Then I have to look up animals. Um, dog. The dreamer may recognise a faithful and constant companion, a protector, or more negatively, somebody the dreamer can't shake off and who might make trouble. Um, when we dream of domesticated animals, we are aware of those parts of ourselves with which we have come to terms. So it might just be that you're missing, um, wondering where part of you has gone to, part of, part of your faithful personality or part, maybe even the part that you can trust or that you've lost trust or something like that. Fiona, and stairs, if they're under stairs, um, it's kind of like you're hiding or you're not actually wanting to take the steps to find that hidden part, that that's all a bit hard. So it's probably nothing to do with past life stuff, it's more something that is hard to face in this lifetime. Hi Annette, great to see you. Um, upstairs is always nice light, but downstairs not so nice. Yeah, so upstairs in our body or our personality, we're all love and light and we're all happy, but downstairs if it's murky, that means there's stuff that we're hiding from people and that we need to actually maybe face that. So. But I, I do want to read you um, this channeling that I did uh, just the other day in response to having a really weird dream myself and then um, also my sister saying everyone in her family was having really weird dreams. Um, and then other people were saying, well, yeah, we are too. And so it was just like, okay, well, what's going on? Because I just think there's lots of shifting. There are lots of things happening in the world and ascension still taking place. And there's a lot of uh, skeletons still coming out of the closet and a lot of myths, mistruths coming out now. Um, so I just asked Creator to tell me what's going on with the dreams. 
So it sounds like a lot of you are having dreams that uh, seem weird, but it's actually telling you that um, there are things you need to face. And to move forward, we, we need to go within and actually let go of the past. And it doesn't mean we have to relive it. It just means we need to let go of it um, and forgive ourselves and others and let go. But if you're um, a practitioner like me or a way show or a light worker or someone who's doing a lot of work for the planet, then it's possible that you're being shown realities that are happening and some of them are very dark and uh, it makes your dreams pretty, my dreams anyway, pretty uh, not so nice. Um, one in particular was horrid. Um, yeah, so when I channeled this from Creator, it actually really made sense. So I'm just going to read it to you. I apologise to those who have read it. Um, but I just wrote on my... I have a private page called The Spiritual Journey with Tor's Angels. Victoria is my name and Tor is my nickname. And uh, all you need to do is just uh, ask to join and I'll let you in. <laughs> um, but it's just for people so that I'm, you know, that I'm not pestering people that don't want to hear from me um, and I wrote I don't know about you but I've been having very strange and sometimes pretty dark dreams lately um, so I asked creator about it there is a lot of shifting on the sub levels of the fourth and lower fifth planes with many untruths being revealed to souls who have previously hidden behind the safety of illusion those souls on the etheric planes are shifting in vibration as are those in a human body, and the unrest is causing people to experience dream states that are more reality than dream. Awakened way showers are working hard in their dreams to circumvent the attempts of the dark forces to drag innocence back into their web of deceit, causing their dreams to be darker and more disturbing than those who are still in the process of ascension. Um, before going to bed, give your angels and guides permission to keep you protected during sleep while assisting you to heal from the past and to embrace your spiritual awakening. Stay grounded and hydrated and keep your energies as clear as possible. The great shift is occurring and realities previously hidden are being revealed. These include those that are both within and outside of each dreamer's consciousness. If you are finding your dreams are disturbing or very real, a cleansing of your body, mind and emotions may help. Drink plenty of water, eat good food and meditate regularly. Keep a dream journal to record patterns and to find symbols that will help you to interpret the messages that are being shown and revealed to you. The world is changing, dear hearts, and finding your way through the maze of untruths and deceit will be easier when you work to keep your thoughts positive, your minds free of worry, and your energy fields unblocked. I am the creator of all that is. So that made, hi Casey, lovely to see you. Hi Kirsten, she says I hear you. Um, yes, Charlotte says, going back to what dreams mean, going upstairs is usually a progression, isn't it? Downstairs is uncertainty, yeah, or needing to go backwards to go forwards. Um, so that's, uh, but interestingly, um, I've been, I bought this just a while ago. You've all seen me read from this book. So these are Archangel Michael's messages um, channeled through the sacred scribe, um, Rona. Herman or Rana Vizain as she calls herself now and she is nearly she's in her late 80s she's an amazing channel um, and this one's more a kind of a working through book of learning um, about creating um, or, or living each day as a master and, and creating your own kind of um, reality but this one is actually, this was written in 2003. I think this one was written in 2008. Hi, Jeanette. Lovely to see you. Um, I hope I'm not on live at the same time as you, am I? <laughs> I hope you're okay. Good to see you. Um, 
So there's a few things in here that are still happening that are actually really relevant to now. And one of them um, I just read before was about, uh, what was it, I have to remind myself. Um, that, oh, I can't remember what it was now. The shifting, oh yeah, the, the sub-levels of the fourth and lower fifth planes. That's the uh, astral plane and that's been having a clear out for quite a while. And so perhaps there's another shift occurring because um, it's certainly stirring things up, isn't it? Um, oh, 12.22, Rach. Hi. Oh, that's great that you just popped in to say hi. Thanks, Jeanette. Um, yeah, so he does talk in here about the astral plane having a clean out and uh, then he talks about um, a lot of things but just how we're all building our ascension a column of light and we're coming back from the murky depths back into our spiritual selves and uh, so a lot of what's in here has actually really resonated with me. So I make it a practice now to get up and just read a chapter before I start the day if I'm not starting too early. And uh, so that's been really great. So, but he does say, I just want to read this to you. Uh, what can you personally do about these distressing situations? And in this book he talks about... 9-11, um, he talks about the children being abused and molested and that kind of thing. And then um, beautiful Lizzie asked a question this morning, well, you know, a lot of, uh, in one of my, um, one of my channelings was a bit, bit implicit about what the masters are asking us to do. But the masters have been talking about this for a long, long time and some of us are just coming back on board. And um, so I feel like sometimes I'm repeating myself over and over. But uh, he says, you start right where you are by first loving and respecting yourself. Then as the example, teach your family and those within your influence what it means to take responsibility for your actions, living your integrity while setting boundaries and projecting unconditional love. You focus on what is right with the world. And that's the main thing, isn't it? We focus on what's wrong with the world, but we've really got to focus on all the beautiful things that are happening um, while radiating the pure love light of spirit to the far reaches of the earth. Add your loving energy to the many unified meditations around the world. But first and foremost, walk your talk and fly your vision. For by your words and deeds you will be known. And that's incredibly powerful stuff and really important. And 17 years on, just as relevant. Um, so he now he says, I would also like to help you understand and clarify how the lower astral planes are being cleared and balanced as all is being drawn upward on the journey back toward perfection. And this is causing a lot of our weird dreams and uh, some of them are not really, they seem more reality. Um, so remember all of you must traverse the pitfalls, glamours and illusion of the fourth dimension or the astral plane and it's many subplanes, so many, many different levels and dimensions on your way to the wonder and beauty of the fifth dimension, which is oneness and ascension. This is the plane of the emotions and is where energies, emotions, desires of the mass consciousness are stored. We're talking about the human collective consciousness and all of our thought forms and everything that goes out. So it's, we're not really talking about spirits flying around being cleared. We're talking about human consciousness being cleared. Um, Swirling, enticing and capturing those who are still caught up in their baser natures. The key word here is illusion and as you lift your consciousness and balance your auric field, you will no longer be influenced by these lower frequencies. 
the energies of the low planes of the fourth dimension are being cleared and gradually drawn upward and balanced as they are incorporated into the higher fourth dimensional frequencies. When we say the lower astral planes no longer exist, we mean they no longer exist as you have known or experienced them in the past. As each of you clears your auric field of the imbalanced energies and moves through the distortions to the mid and higher levels of the fourth dimension, you help clear and balance the negative energies there. So when we clear and balance ourselves, we really help the world. And it's just so important to be working on ourselves. And so, yes, we need to take responsibility for our own thoughts, our actions, and for our integrity and the way that we're acting and behaving on Earth. And because it just doesn't affect us and our family, it affects everyone. And I've talked before about the mass consciousness and how we can tap into that and where that's where I think, um, you know, snap terrorism comes from when people get hit by this wave of really nasty energy. And so we need to be clearing that. And the way we can do that is to clear our thoughts and to actually really heal the past, let go of hatred and let go of vengeance and all of that, all of those lower frequencies and really work on ourselves and when we do that it ripples out to the rest of the world and makes a huge, huge difference. Massive. So yes, it always starts with self. We can't change anyone but ourselves. We can't. We don't have permission. Even if they're our husband or dad or really close to us, we only have permission to change ourselves. And we have to give ourselves permission to let go, forgive and let go. Hi Angie, great to see you. So he just goes on to say, gradually all the imperfections that humanity has created down through the ages <clears throat> will be transmuted and brought back into balance. You will remember none of the failures, pain and suffering, only the successes wonder and beauty of your earthly journey. As you move back into unity consciousness and in harmony with your higher self, the astral body and the journey through the lower astral planes will seem like a dream, a figment of your imagination. In addition, you're helping the souls that are caught up in or who reside in the web of the lower fourth dimensional illusion. So very, very important and so with the dreams, it is important then to know what they're trying to tell you and uh, what it is that you're being guided or encouraged to let go of, to heal, to transmute. Um, but also, if you are working for the planet, then you do need some rest. And if you're waking up exhausted, then you need to ask the masters to help you to still rest pardon me, and to work with you to perhaps take over your role in the uh, etheric realms while you get some sleep. Hi Samantha, and also to uh, just protect your energies from, from being attacked, because that can happen. Um, someone on my page also talked about should we not be talking about dark forces and all the dark things that are going on. Um, the Masters do, and um, it comes through a bit in my channelings, but very, very vague about, you know, I'm never going to name and shame countries or people or anything, or kind of, we can't let them know, because they hook into people with, they have scalar technology and stuff, and if you're feeling drained or feel like you're only part there or like you're under attack, it's possible that they have found your energy, partic particularly if you're always sending love and light and things. And so always asking that you're kept under the radar, that you are protected and, um, you know, do we get embroiled in what they're doing and all of that? No, we do what Archangel Michael says and we live by example, we heal um, our, all our imperfections and the past and we send love and light to the world and the violet flame and we just keep above all of that 
Um, we can know it's happening. Uh, you know, as soon as I go down that rabbit hole, I'm no good to anybody, honestly, because then I feel like nothing's um, really, that there's no hope. And I'm no good to you or anyone if I'm not feeling that there is. And I know there is. I know that we are uh, so powerful in what we can manifest and what we can do as long as we can stay positive and as long as we can project that out to the world but if we're getting dragged down into the ins and outs of who's responsible and what they're doing and all of that I just can't go there just can't go there thank you Fiona um, oh wow Kim that's beautiful beautiful that he did that to let you know um, blessings to him and uh, may he be um, passed over and, and find peace on his onward journey. So, hi Colleen, great to see you. Yeah, waking up tired. So, we also need to be looking at our nutrition things. And um, yesterday, when I was working with someone, I, um, I was actually shown, might have been the day before, everything just kind of everything goes so quickly. The world with DNA going through it. <clears throat> And that was like, wow, I knew that was significant, but I wasn't really sure what it was. And so I did a channeling about it, and it was about the cosmic DNA and how it's changing rapidly and how um, Archangel Michael talks too about how different species on the planet have a certain lifespan and then they die out. And they have to. Imagine if we tried to live with dinosaurs, that would just be impossible. Um, and that they, but that um, everything works symbiotically because of the food chain and, and all of that. But now with climate change, how um, species aren't mm -hmm. being given chances to adapt. You know, we have ad adaptations and that we're actually not um, being able to kind of evolve. Evolution is actually not able to keep up with the environmental changes that are happening on Earth. And so even though we can't really, you know, intervene on humans as such, because humans are making these decisions, you know, but the animals and the plants and the na nature uh, diva kingdom and they all need our help and so sending toning vibrations sending love sending the violet flame all of that to mother earth is hugely important because when we can actually quiet mother earth and help and also yes of course we need to take um, we need to take responsibility for our carbon footprint and for what we're doing to the earth and make sure we're being more sustainable and but you know we we need to send a lot of healing to the earth and so the dna the cosmic dna that was pretty mind-blowing to see that and i did find some pictures that people had done of the earth with a big uh, helix double helix through it and then there was a picture of um, cosmic DNA taken in outer space and it was actually in like a nebula and it looked like a DNA double helix so pretty amazing um, yeah they are that's right so um, and we must lobby we must lobby the politicians so we must stand up and the young ones coming through now you know and again in my channelings and in Ronna's channelings the masters talk about the babies born in the last 30 years the last three decades of how they are just pure mastery coming in and they are very talented and very switched on and they are our future and we must listen to them you may Kirsten so there is uh, something called the violet flame and it's an etheric flame and uh, the keeper of the violet flame is Archangel Zadkiel, or the keepers are Archangel Zadkiel and Holy Amethyst. So the amethyst crystal is actually part of the violet flame, and we use 
the amethyst crystal to transmute negativity to love. So if you're having a lot of negativity in your life or you, you work in a place there where there's a lot of kind of darker energy, you can keep a, an amethyst crystal there and it will absorb that. Um, and I use the violet flame all the time, which is why I always have purple nails. <laughs> Um, the other, the, the master who works with Zadkiel and Holy Amethyst is Saint Germain. And so he's the keeper of the Violet Flame as well. And the Violet Flame is also associated with the Crown Chakra or the Violet Ray. So it's a gift to the world. And in my first book, this was brought out in 2013, um, Saint Germain talked about the Violet Flame. <coughs> and the elements. Um, the violet flame comes to us as a gift from Mother Earth. It is freely given to transmute all negativity to positive energy. Mother Earth needs all light workers to utilize the flame as part of their healing energy as it will greatly assist in her ascension. That's so true, Rachel. Just reading Rachel Hamill, the younger generation seem to be growing taller than last generations came to me the other day, we are evolving. Um, so the violet flame is of no substance, rather it is pure energy that is angelic in nature. <clears throat> it has healing properties that can be used by those with the highest and best intentions. It springs from eternal love from Creator, our God, and is sourced from Mother Earth's diamond core. It is the sacred element of fire, but it carries no heat. Say its name, hold it with intention, and send it with love. Um, so, and then Holy Amethyst talks about uh, in crystals. Use amethyst crystals to absorb negative energies. Amethyst has many healing properties. It will also protect your aura from absorbing other people's energies. So, if you're an empath, amethyst is a really good crystal to have. Amethyst crystals have long been used in this way, but their healing properties are less unknown. Know that the violet flame does not come from the amethyst crystal, yet it contains many healing properties that are akin to its own. When you use them in tandem for your healings, both for Mother Earth and for human needs, the combination will be a powerful one. To combine mm -hmm. amethyst crystals with the violet flame, all you need to do is hold the crystal in your palm as you invoke the flame. The properties of the crystal will be combined with the flame as you send healing. This will be most beneficial. So crystals absorb energy and then uh, really strong energy. I've had crystals break in half or get really cracked. So they do need to be cleansed. And if you're using them all the time, you don't have a month to wait to put them out in the moonlight. So I just use, uh, I use purified water or bo cooled boiled water and just cleanse them and dry them and um, because they, they do emit energy, they emit healing energy but they also absorb energy so you do need to cleanse them regularly. Oh wow. <laughs> Rachel says, my daughter had amethyst angel. It broke into three during troubling times at school. They work well. Absolutely. It took the fall for her, which is awesome. Um, Charlotte says, I used the violet flame when I was meditating last night. The amethyst in my, uh, in, just fell out of my hand. Wow. That's amazing. Um, yeah, very. So the violet flame is, just it's a gift from the earth and if you're not sure how to bring it up you can call in Saint Germain, call in Archangel Zadkiel or uh, Holy Amethyst which is the Archaea or the female side of uh, Archangel Zadkiel and ask them to bring it up and I even I, it's important to use it when you're getting angry and stuff like that too because that we project everything out into the world and so uh, when I start getting a bit grumpy I'll bring it up and just use it to transmute those feelings and it really does work and I use it in my healings with people all the time and uh, get them to just envision lifting and letting go and seeing it spark off as golden light and it works. Um, I forgot again to put my headphones in 
Now hopefully you can hear me a bit better. That's probably a bit better. Um, I'm, I'm always forgetting. Sorry. Um, so now let's move into some readings. And Kirsten, oh no, Samantha Love says, any guidance for me? Victoria being a bit run down. So if it's all right with you, then I will uh, tune into you. But the energies can be exhausting. And also, if you have been doing work on yourself, been meditating, connecting with your guides, you could be going through something called ascension sickness. And that can be very draining. Um, and some people are affected by the cycles of the moon and that kind of thing. But I'll tune in. Um, I could actually draw a card for you, Samantha. And then... Um, see how we go. I apologise if people are watching on my Victoria Cochrane page, but I'm not getting any more comments, so... Um, I do appreciate you being on. All right, so this is for Samantha. Um. Right, it would be really wonderful if you could share this video too onto your pages and let people know about me. I have a new book coming out um, on the 10th of November and I have a VIP event for the launch on the 14th of November and Sarah from Spiritual Events is about to release the details of that. There are 20 tickets available uh, for that and then the launch is at 7pm on the 14th of November so I'm really excited. Um, so the card I get, hi Donna, great to see you. <laughs> Colleen says she always um, paints her toes purple. So please just let me know that you've shared. Um, that would just be a great exchange of energy for me. Thank you. And I really think that going within would be great for you, um, Samantha, that you've been a bit run down. Meditation and focus would be helpful for you right now. Gentle opening of your third eye chakra. Pay attention to the signs, opportunity within the challenge. So what energy are you giving out and what, how much are you getting back? And there's obviously an imbalance there. So just tuning in. There's quite a lot of emotion, but there's also a lot of fatigue and a lot of other people's energy on you. Just need to have some more boundaries, I think. Samantha and uh, make sure that you bring your energy back to you at the end of the day and that you breathe and ground and zip your aura up and just cut ties with people who've been that you've been interacting with and particularly those that have been um, super draining so um, but just have some quiet time meditation is as simple as not thinking you know and being present and being mindful and just being in your body and just being, really. Um, so, Lisa, Lisa Mundy. Uh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Fiona. Gee, you know, tuning into people who have passed over, I have done that before, but it takes a little bit longer, and I've only got 15 minutes. But if you ever would like a reading on... I do, mediumship is one of the things I do, and uh, it's probably a more private thing, so please do. But I, I do send you lots of love, and it's a release, and uh, he's obviously with you, I'd say. Uh, so this is for Lisa now. Uh, rebirth, <laughs> let go of old wounds that hold you back, shed that old skin and release. Uh, 
Kundalini Rising, Serpent Deep Throat Healing, Awaken Your Truth. So Lisa, if there are lots of changes going on for you, then just let them happen. You know, just really release and let go because we can't move forward if, uh, if we're holding on to the past. And so the snake is about uh, a lot of things. It can be about sexuality and that's certainly what um, Kundalini is. But it's also about uh, the fire is just burning away all of the, the everything that doesn't serve you anymore. So continue with your spiritual practices and just allow uh, the changes to occur. I will uh, pull a card out for Fiona. Thanks Rachel, I have a look in a minute. Don't know. Oh, there is a black box actually. You're amazing. Get out of the closet, Rachel. Shine the light. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll get that in a sec. Um, this is for Fiona. Um, healing hands. So this says you have the ability to heal yourself. Ask your hands to fill with healing light, then place them where you are pained or on your heart to soothe and nourish. And just give thanks for knowing your brother and send him love and send yourself love. And just know that uh, he's listening to you and that he's all right. Uh, and just bring in some light while you're at it. And Archangel Raphael's there with you as well, Fiona. So. Uh, call on him to help you. All right, getting to the black box in a sec. I know the one she means. Amazing. Um, thank you, Samantha. Um, thanks, Catherine. Um, Kat, Kat Gray, would love a reading, please. So I'm using these healing energy cards today. They seem to be the ones that have popped in to my hands. <laughs> um, Goddess Awakening. So this one says it's time to walk through into the unknown. You are being guided to birth new things, to embrace change and to welcome the power of now. So I hope that resonates with you, Kat. Um, hi Jenny, lovely to see you. Hi One Queen, great to see you. It is, I hope all is well with you as well. Um, There's something just uh, holding you back and it's like tugging at your heartstrings, Kat, that you need to let go of. But, you know, this is time for you and to, to not walk in other people's shoes or to go by other people's rules. This is your time to, uh, to embrace that change and to bring in who you truly are. And the world needs that. Um, Casey... Spiritual surgery, you just need to um, let go of all everything that doesn't serve you, all your uh, fears and worries. Deep tissue repair, spiritual surgery on the body. Relax and allow the surgeons to help you. Physical pain, do you have pain, Casey? Uh, crystals for healing, self-healing, repair on all levels. Ask for help. But perhaps um, have a crystal healing or get some crystals that resonate with you and use them in a self-healing. And beautiful Catherine, just do one for you. I don't need to tune in to you because I've seen you recently. Um, okay, I'll try some self-acceptance. So a lot of things have been revealed for Catherine this week that are pretty mind-blowing. Assistance with weight loss, emotional baggage, blocked creativity and stagnant sexual energy, true acceptance of self, stomach area healing, sacral and solar plexus. But it's also got a, a one one, an eye, a sun, a heart, 
there's a lot of imagery in there. It's like you're just blossoming now. The, the flower is blooming. And uh, it, it, everything just needs to... It will happen for your highest and best, but just allow it to happen. And, uh, you know, don't overthink it too much either. Just bring it in. Okay, going to have a look in my basket. It wasn't quite down the bottom but it was there and it's pretty black. So Rachel said there's a black box down the bottom of your basket. I've been told that there's a card that's uh, it, there's a message for everyone. So I'll get that. Um, Hannah says she switched lives. I would love if there was a message for me today. I've asked for signs so maybe you might be able to deliver. Thanks Angie. Um, having problems with you. Oh dear. Yeah, that's good, Fiona. You're welcome, Kat. Okay, thanks, Kerry. Um, also, getting nice confirmation from people, so that's great. Um, okay, this is for everybody, and then I'll go back to individuals. These are beautiful. These are part of the Soul Destiny cards, and I didn't use them for a long time, but they're by... Um, who are they by? Cheryl Lee Harnish and their fractal energy art. So I definitely need the book. But asking for a reading in the energy of unconditional love of the Creator for everyone who's watching uh, in every time, place and dimension uh, for your highest and best. Thank you. It is done. And... How amazing is that? Actually, it looks a bit like a spider with bloomers on. But uh, it's number, it's upside down, sorry. There we go. Oh, now we can see it's muscle man and a dartboard. Weird. But it's number 38. So I'll look in the book and this is a message for the collective today. Thank you to Rachel. Intuitive Arts Guide. There are many forms of intuitive work being done on the planet today. Using your intuitive gifts has a large role in the work you are really here to do. There are many tasks that are undertaken which actually involve the intuitive process. Whether you paint, write, uh, sorry, whether you paint, write music, design, raise children, waitress or give psychic readings, you are operating from an intuitive source. This guide is here to help you see that your role is important. The work you do is needed. You are in service and your intuitive knowledge is strong. You are helping others to acknowledge and accept their own intuition. So give yourself some credit for what you're doing. Uh, whether you feel it's important or not, it really is. And think about those that you're uh, influencing and those that you're helping and those that you're modelling for. Very, very important. Be the leader and uh, just know that it affects the world around you in more ways than you would know. So that is a really important message I think for everybody today. So that's out of the black books in the black box in the bottom of my basket. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, so moving forward. Hi Rhonda, great to see you. Hi Katie. That um yes, yeah, so if you could just share this so other people on your page can get to meet me I'll, I would be really appreciative and then I will uh, pull cards for people Hannah I'm going to switch cards I think not sure which ones actually yes I am 
I'm going to switch to Earth Magic Cards. <coughs> just make sure that that's the right. So I'm just testing, muscle testing, and then I'm getting a yes. <coughs> I've a frog in my throat. Okay, this is for Hannah up in Sydney. Completion, coming full circle. <coughs> so full moon, completion, coming full circle, ready to go the next step and create a new journey. Uh, so just meditate on that hand and uh, see how that resonates with you. Uh, yeah, but... It's just that part, that phase of your journey um, that's come full circle. Angie. Okay, this one. Lake, stillness. Really need to do some meditating, slowing down and just sit in the sanctity of you for a while away from everyone and everything and where you live is perfect for that um, but really just need to calm your emotions and just be and breathe for a while Angie. Uh, Donna you're on so I will pull a card for you. Um, Donna's all the way over in the US so uh, hoping things are all good with you and that you're staying safe. And compassion, love, so um, just it's like uh, joining forces with someone to actually see that, to, to see both sides of the story, to actually, uh, yeah, sometimes we don't really understand the journey someone else has been on, um, but this is about a meeting in the middle and uh, it might not be a relationship you're in, it might be a friendship or goodness knows, but it's when you have compassion and understanding for someone, then that mends all kinds of, heals all kinds of wounds. So that's for you, Donna, today. And moving forward to Rhonda, welcome. Um, and Charlotte, I'll do one for you as well. Um, and Rachel, everyone who's here, thank you so much for being on with me today. Um, I'm in Tasmania and grounded at the moment. I mean, we can move around the state, but I'm so wanting to come over and see family in Victoria, but it'll happen when soon I hope. Now Rhonda, Radiance, so shine your light and uh, summer solstice it's like uh, now to, as we move into well in Victoria uh, in Australia we're moving into summer we're in the spring but um, it's about seeing the bright side of things and actually allowing the uh, the good things to come into your life and seeing the good things about you as well go within to shine without so things if things haven't been so good they're getting better so um, that's a message for you today um, and Katie oh just dropped a heap of cards so I'll use those ones <coughs> Okay, Rachel, you've got to tell me what this frog in the throat's about because it's only just happened since I came on here. Rachel will know. Um, here we go. Mm -hmm. um, Katie, you need to ground. You need to really just put down some roots and really feel grounded and in, the, in your body and in the present. 
lots of things going on. Um, you're spread too thin as well. So just breathe, bring yourself back to you, just ground and uh, have a, a good day to yourself where you're not rushing about like a chook with its head cut off. Just really, yeah, you just need to slow down a little bit, I would say. So I hope that resonates with you, Katie. You're welcome, Donna. Um, yes. So I'm just going to pull one for Rachel. Need to stay hydrated. Here we go. Um, Donna says I'm a mental health counsellor. Oh wow. You're welcome, Rhonda. Um, yeah. So. Um, can't remember what card I picked for you now Donna but I hope it was that it resonated with you that's the main thing mm -hmm. here we go mm. oh wow so Rachel this is for you it's like the path is clearing and everything's being released and the lights coming in and um, good changes happening so this is autumnal equinox, so letting everything drop, all the leaves drop and just starting anew. Um, and I'm sure you'll be able to resonate with that one. Uh, ascension, download to the max. Yeah, that's right. And yes, I've been sneezing a bit this morning, so thank you. <laughs> Nothing too serious then, that's good to know. Emily. Uh, yes, you may. Lovely to meet you. Uh, and I see that I've been going for over an hour, so I will have to go and have some lunch and uh, get on with other things. This is for Emily Trowbridge. Lightning, power. So this one is actually an, um, uh, an interesting meaning because it actually means that when we focus our energy on something, we make it happen. But if our energy is scattered, then it can put everything into turmoil and just um, create a bit of chaos in our lives. So at the moment, it might be that you're unsure of something or... You've got too many things on the go, Emily, but you really, really just need to prioritise and focus on what is important and what is possible for you to do at the moment and then things will just fall into place. So really perhaps just write down all the things that you've got to do or that you're trying to do, all the things that are just in the hard basket and then just cut and cull and just work what is the most important thing that you need to focus on to make happen and then it will just flow so and that's for everybody you know if you if you've got so many things on the go you just can't focus on what's important and then nothing kind of happens so that's what that means be focused and clear on what you want or need to happen and then it will and then you'll feel a lot less frazzled as well so I hope that resonated with you and uh, one queen I'd like to just do one for you as well um, and Tanya and then I feel like I've covered most people so one queen this is for you Ta I know you've got a lot of family over there and but perhaps you know at the moment with things the way they are in America you just need to uh, do some meditating and you probably feel like you've been in a cave I don't know what it's like over where you are but make it your sanctuary and make it a space that is pleasant to be in and that you can feel safe and perhaps do some meditating and start to see uh, what the masters are trying to to tell you um, and the sanctuary is actually in here so go within and actually sit in the sanctuary of your heart space and the sanctity of your spiritual self and uh, you'll feel a lot clearer so I hope that 
that's helpful for one queen. And the last one is for Tanya. For um, Thank you for tuning in. This one. A wake-up call. So maybe there's something happening that seems like there's a bit of a rift or something going on in your life that's um, not going so well. But when it's acknowledged and uh, brought out in the open, then it will heal itself. So uh, it's just for everybody to be aware that perhaps things need to be cleared and healed and uh, perhaps a new direction taken. So it's, uh, if, if you don't listen, then bad things can happen. Just uh, or when I say bad, you know, things will go up a level because you haven't listened even though you knew you were supposed to. <laughs> so you're welcome, Emily. Okay, thank you so much for being on today with me and for your interactions and your beautiful comments. And remember, I'm Victoria Cochran. I'm on every Wednesday. Uh, I am. I have articles in uh, the Rebirth magazines, and I uh, am. I have a website, victoriacochran.com, and three published books, and one coming out on my 60th birthday. I can't believe that I'm turning 60 on the 10th of November. So uh, you can pre order now on my website. Uh, keep an eye out for the event of, my, of the book launch online at Spiritual Events Directory on the 14th of November, and there'll be a VIP event with 20 tickets available giveaways, readings, insights, all that kind of thing. Love and light to you, Angie. Funny you've written Toe, but do you know my sister's uh, children call me Auntie Toe? Got no idea, but you've just tapped into that. Love you too, Catherine. Rachel says, evolution, evolution equals cleansing. With cleansing goes on the bridges faster. Hence the head, cold, throat issues. Still no idea. The words are to answer your question about your throat. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Love and light to you all. Blessings and love. And I'll see you next week. Bye for now.